Hello and welcome to my EverWebinar tutorial and demo. What I'm going to be doing is walking you through the steps when it comes to getting up and running with EverWebinar. Of course, if you haven't gotten to grab it or test it out, I will leave my link in the description where you can do that. Let's begin. So first things first, when you go to create a webinar, what's going to show up is your configuration. So you can use an external video file or you can use a previous webinar live session, excuse me, webinar jam live session. In case you didn't know, EverWebinar and webinar jam are owned by the same company. I have both, which is why you're going to see like if you want to flip flop from one to the other, you can do that. So if you have webinar jam, you can just simply use it that way. Nevertheless, as an example, I got a demo webinar already on YouTube and it's going to be from Russell Brunson. So all you need to do is put the video file there. You can utilize a few more. You have MP4, YouTube, Vimeo, and you can learn how here. Nevertheless, you want to put the duration of the video. So this is how long it's going to be. This one was two hours and 12 minutes. Okay, so after you are done with that, you want to simply click on save. And this is what's going to happen after you go through everything. You're going to start here. You're going to go down the list, going through what you want to utilize, hit next. Go through here, go down, and continue on and continue forward. So let's go with basic settings. All right, and just for this example, I'm just going to call it, you know, online business. This is going to be a private title, so it's just going to be for your reference only. This is what everyone's going to see when they go to sign up. So how to launch your online business while leveraging eBooks, just what I came up with off the top of my head. And here's how to monetize what you already know. In case you want to utilize different languages, most likely it's going to be English, but it could be something different. You never know, but I just want to showcase those in case you wanted to see. And in case you want to add a webinar thumbnail, you can do that. There's going to be a lot of things here that are very self-explanatory. Like I'm sure you're not know to upload a webinar thumbnail, right? So I'm just going to skip by a lot of those things and the aesthetic thing is because you can always upload your own picture, your logo, your brand colors, and so on and so forth. Let's click on save. And we have some moderators here. So here's going to be me. Obviously, that's going to be you with your email address. It's going to be webinar host and moderator. But in case you want to add something, you can do that there with the moderators. That's going to be good. Let's click on save and next. All right, so webinar schedules are going to be a very big deal when it comes to this because what you can do is set it to whenever someone lands on the page, they can watch the replay, or it's really up to you. So first and foremost, you can do every or on specific days. So for example, let's do every day at you know, 12, let's see, let's see, do 11 a.m. Okay, and the user's time zone, which is auto detection, I would do that one, that one's good, so it's gonna probably work best for them. So it's gonna be 11 a.m. wherever they are. Now, you can go through this and just add specific dates and times like that, or what you can do, if you probably wanna get the most amount of people watching, what you can do is enable instant watch replay. So. What that means is that whenever they get to it, they can pretty much watch the on-demand replay right away. I like this because you're being upfront and honest saying that like, hey, this is obviously a replay. You can watch it immediately instead of waiting. So you could literally just do that if you wanted to. You could always do the enable just in time option. So this feature mimics a scenario where the registrant arrives to the registration page just a few minutes before the webinar is about to start. So you could obviously just do it this way too if you want. So Next session available, you can choose every 15, 30, 45, and at the top of the hour. I'm going to go with that one since there's plenty of flexible options there. Okay, so display the next immediate available schedules, the three next. So you can do that. You can do the next four. So it'd be obviously, you know, 15, 30, 45, and at the top of the hour. Do not block any day. Allow short notice registration. So you can do this if you want to disallow the same day registrations, block today and tomorrow. That's not going to be as big of a deal since this is an automated webinar. You're not having to like worry about taking tomorrow off because you're going on vacation, right? It's an automated webinar. It runs when you sleep around the clock and so on and so forth you can block holidays and specific dates to make it look you know more like hey you're probably not doing a webinar but like i said before if people know it's an an automated webinar not going to be a huge day nevertheless let's say we like that we're going to go with the like enable just in time option so it's say it's 11 or let's say it's let's see it is 10 50 right now it's going to show 11 11 15 11 30 and 11 45 or so, something like that right so let's go with save and let's go with next. All right, so we have a registration page design. So really gonna be up to you what you wanna go with this. Like I've always talked about, I love the simple ones. Uh, we can even preview this just to show you. Like not a whole lot going on and I like that. Let's just go with this one and I'm gonna customize it just to kind of show you what the, um, the page looks like, okay? You can do split testing too if you want. And we have our registration bar. We have the registration bubble, registration button, or the embed form. So the bar is going to be at the bottom and the button is going to be more of a button. Let's go with a button on this one. All right, so not a whole lot going on here. And that is fantastic, if you ask me. 
This, in my opinion, is the epitome of being simple. I love this because you don't have to focus on like, oh, adding all these different things. There's a whole lot less to split test when you're just focusing on your headline and a little bit extra right here, right? There's just really not much else going on and it allows you to get you up and running, which is great. I know webinars can feel daunting, especially if you're doing a live one, but when it comes to obviously a presentation, nevertheless, it's good to get it up and running. So this is really what we're gonna be changing right here. So if we click on that, we can can add a little bit more. Maybe you want to add some bullet points here, you know, who this is going to be for and so on and so forth. It's not really about like exactly what you need to write because obviously this is going to be just an example. You're probably doing something different or maybe you're not. So keep in mind headline a little bit more, you know, have them uh, call to action, click the register button below and so on and so forth. Anyway, let's just go with save and right here. And I'm just gonna show you the preview button. So, well, I'll show you what it looks like after clicking the preview button, that is. Okay, open preview. Okay, how to launch your online business while leveraging eBooks. And obviously this is going to be active once you publish the live page. So, so we're just looking at the overall presentation here. I can give you a view of what this is gonna look like later. Simple stuff, right? I love keeping my stuff simple. I hope you do too. Let's go to save and exit. Okay, so let's save that. We have registration form fields, okay? So this is what we were showcased previously. If you wanna add the last name and in case you wanna add the phone number, you can. So personally, I don't care for last name. I don't care for phone number. I don't do any text marketing or you know phone marketing. If you wanna, all the power to you. It's just something I haven't done. I think these are gonna be great. These are also mandatory. You can't like get rid of these. Like You can't do that, it has to be on. So if this was anything other than a webinar, say if it was a lead generation page for a free gift, I would probably just use email. It's the easiest for someone to just enter their email. So keep in mind, a little tip here is the more form fields that you have on a landing page, the less conversions you're going to get. So that's why I like to keep it lean. Just these two should be great. This is gonna be an option in case you wanna use free versus paid. So this is actually good where maybe you have a course and you're gonna host it on every webinar. So for example, hey, if you wanna purchase this course, you can charge the registration fee and they get to see the replay automatically. So it's kinda of like another way of delivering a course, which is a cool thing to do. So pretty self-explanatory. I'm gonna keep it free because I imagine you're probably doing that as well. If you want some notifications, you can do that. You will not receive an email notification when an attendee registers to a webinar, so really up to you. And if you want to password protect this, really up to you once again. You know, I don't think I've ever password protected a webinar, but uh, if for some odd reason you needed to, the ability to do it is right there. Let's click next. All right, so what you can do when it comes to your email gateway, you can use EverWebinar Mail, which I think is cool. And you can also use your own autoresponder, which you'd have to integrate as well. So I'm just going to say go with this one here. And we have a reminder notifications. Let's edit this very quickly. All right, so here's the cool thing that EverWebinar is going to do automatically. So what happens is whenever they sign up, they're going to get their confirmation. Okay, and what we can do here is send a test email, we can edit, and we can delete this. So you can't add more pre-webinar reminders. Well, that was a tongue twister. Pre-webinar reminders by simply doing add email. And of course, you have your last minute notification. You're probably not going to need as many, especially if you're doing like the just on time one where it's every 15 minutes. And of course, you can do post-webinar notification. So for example, let's take a look at what this one looks like here. You have the title here, which is going to just be auto updated along with the date and time. And this is going to be the link where they can go there. And if there's a room password, which you talked about, that's where it's going to be. So in case you want to add a few more, you can do the add email, add email, and then go from there. But let's keep it as it is and move on to the next step. All right, so for email autoresponder integration, this is obviously dependent on which one you're gonna be used, but simply select it and follow the steps. I can't obviously go through all of these, that would take forever. It's pretty self-explanatory, and they do have pretty much a step-by-step -step way of setting that up. Pretty straightforward, it's usually just getting like the API key and attaching it to your autoresponder. And of course, if you don't have one of these, there is the ability to integrate with Zapier, which allows you to then integrate with many more autoresponders. Let's just go with this. And third-party tracking systems, this is where gonna be like your Facebook ad pixel google analytics in case you want to use that i'm not huge on that and like i have experience with it but i'm not like super super into that they're going to be much more knowledgeable about that so you can go to read more in case you want to use that or if you just don't want to use any third party tracking that's fine you can just go on with it and go with next all right, so we have our thank you pages. You can do a confirmation page that's going to be your own. So if you wanna send them to something that's completely fine, you can do that. Or you can use a default confirmation page. We're gonna go with this, okay? So let's go with save. And we have, if you wanna survey the people who have come through, you can click on yes here. All right, so let's just say poll allowing only one answer. Let's go with this. 
All right, so what is most important about starting a digital business? I'm just gonna put a few options here. All right, so this was just an example off the top of my head. So like, what's the most important thing about starting a digital business? I would say like probably gonna be better answers, but if there's one word that happened to describe it that you'd like to get out of it, would it be the freedom, the passion, the creativity, or the happiness? Just as an example, okay? So I'm gonna keep that, let's go with save. And we have our thank you page design. So once again, we can keep it simple. I'm gonna go with this one just cause it's very similar to the one we just utilized. Let's go to customize. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here cause it's pretty much identical to uh, what we saw previously. So I probably wouldn't change too much here. You can change that around. Once again, it's usually just double clicking on something or going right here to edit what you need to edit. So this is gonna be obviously the link. This is going to be, this is an example which is not edible and Pretty much good to go. We have our survey right here. So let's actually save and preview so we can save. Probably didn't need to do that since we didn't edit anything, but let's go to preview and open preview. And we can start the survey. And it's gonna look something like that. It's gonna be disabled in preview mode, but just to kind of give you an idea. So while they are waiting, maybe it might be a few minutes. That is an option that you can leverage. Let's go back, let's save this and on to the next. So autoplay. Do you want to enable autoplay? So when users land on your webinar, the video will play automatically. Some browsers autoplay policy forbids the use of autoplay videos with sound. So you could always just disable it where they just simply have to click on play. And you're just going to get some examples here with the text that you can use for the call to action and what it's going to look like. You know, these all look fine to me. We can just preview this, you know, something like that. I think that's going to look fine. Not a whole lot of difference in these, but let's go with that one and click save. We have our countdown page design. And this is gonna be for whenever someone's waiting. So let's say they got to the room early and it hasn't launched yet. Once again, I'm just gonna show you the preview of this. I think you get the idea once again where a lot of the things that comes to the landing page editors in terms of your webinar pages are gonna be just about identical. And we have some live content. While this looks like live content I'm gonna be doing in Evergreen and Automated Webinar, this is going to be probably some of the most important features here. So as you can see here, we have events. Under this, we have polls, we have file sharing, we have announcements, we have sticky messages, we have product offers, live sale announcement, and of course, redirect. So something to keep in mind here is that, you know, are you gonna to wanna to utilize a poll? Are you gonna be using file sharing? So for this, for example, if you've ever been to a webinar and they say, if you stay to the end of this presentation, I'll be handing out my free gift to you, so-and-so. So what happens is that when you get to the end, you can share that file for them, okay? Sticky messages. But one of the most important things here probably that you're interested in is gonna be the product offer, so. All right, so here we are, just an example. Your image would go here. So if you have like, like a nice ebook or whatever, it's going to be a course, a nice bundle of that. So what we have is the name of it. We have a little bit extra right there, which is just saying a call to action. Click the add to cart button below. And this is going to be the actual button. This button is going to link to your checkout cart. And you can also edit when it's going to come down. So this is important. So. You might be introducing your product, but then once you get to the price drop page, it's gonna be a one-time payment of $497. Boom, whenever that happens in your presentation is gonna be when you want that to pop up. And of course, when the offer can end, it's usually gonna be at the end of it, obviously. You don't wanna say like, this is the price, and then like show the <laughs> add the cart button on the right for what, 10 seconds and it disappears. People aren't gonna be able to buy. So this is generally towards the end. And of course, if you wanna apply urgency in your offer, you can do that. I'm just gonna click on save, but this is probably gonna be one of the most most important features where you can obviously sell and promote your course. Okay, so if there's anything else that you wanted to do, like it shows adding events because it's showing up in terms of the like the time, the time frame right here. So you can see this is when it's gonna go, this is when it's gonna end, and so on and so forth. There's also gonna be a redirect, so like what happens at this specific time. Generally, what you want to do, say at the end, when it ends, you can say just you know, shuffle people to the checkout page. You can do that if you want. It's really up to you, but it's an option. Everything else is gonna be pretty self-explanatory. Another thing I like about EverWebinar is that when you click on something, it's not gonna be like, what do I do here? It's gonna simply show you, kind of like what we did with the product offer, go through and fill this specific information and then basically use what you need. So let's go with save. There is a live chat box, of course. So this can be disable chat. You can enable live chat. So pre-configure comment lines to roll in as the event was live, or you can display a question box, you know, really up to here. I'll probably just go with disable so you can save yourself some time and display number of attendees. Of course, if this isn't going to be a live presentation, I recommend just keeping it private or like the actual real attendees in the room. So like, you're not just saying like, we have one of those webinars that there's a thousand people on here and there's like two people. It's like, come on, like people understand this nowadays. It's not gonna be like that unless it actually is live. But 
that's really going to be up to you and how you want to go about that. But you could always just do don't display the attendee account. Really, it's a personal preference. Let's go with next. And we have our webinar replay recording. So no, do not allow access to the replay page. So the system will block access to the replay room so nobody can watch the replay video. And yes, allow access to replay page. You will be able to send your attendees to the replay room to watch the recordings of your live session. So once again, that is going to be up to you. Let's say we wanna go with yes. Let's just click on save. We have some controls for this. So if you don't wanna add this, if you do wanna add controls, sometimes it's a good idea too. Maybe someone has seen some of the webinar and then from there they just wanna like skip ahead. So you could always do that and just you know allow people to get to the spot they need to. So you can click on save. Replay page expiration date. If you wanna have that expire, you can do that, which is cool. And you can allow users to submit questions if needed. So you can always activate that. Obviously, whatever your email is, they can have it sent there. So this is a good thing because when people ask questions, it allows you to fine tune your presentation because if a specific question is stopping someone from purchasing, what you can do is go back to your webinar and say like, okay, well, I have to address this because it might be getting in the way of someone actually making a purchase when it really wasn't even a big deal at all. So let's just click on save there. And with that, let's click next. We are done. Let's go to dashboard. Let me load up that link and I'll show you how it looks. All right, so how to launch your online business while leveraging eBooks and a little bit more. Obviously, this is what you're going to add there. That's just an example, you know. So let's click on register and I'll show you what it looks like when someone can enter in their information. All right, so we have the next available time, which is gonna be, let's see. So at the time of creating this, that's gonna be in eight minutes, okay? Just to kind of show you, we have the first name, we have a random email that I'm gonna put here. So I didn't integrate with this specific example, so I'm not sure if it will, I think it'll go through, it just won't add, obviously, since it's not connected, but let's go with register now. And there we are. So how to launch your online business while leveraging eBooks. And of course we have to start the survey right here. So what is the most important, what is most important about starting a digital business? Let's go with freedom. A lot of these are great things too. Surveys uh, completed successfully. And let's say we wanna go here. And this is what I was talking about. Like if someone is early, this is where they're gonna be waiting, like um, you know, almost ready to go. So it's gonna have the countdown there and so on and so forth. So that is going to be a very quick, actually that wasn't a very quick, let me take that back. That was a pretty extensive ever webinar tutorial. I always feel like they go quick because I started, I finished, and I just completely lose track of time. Plus a little time hack, I don't keep my time on my screen because I feel like every time you look at it, it's like time goes really slow. But. Nevertheless, so that was going to be the EverWebinar tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you want to pick up EverWebinar and you haven't gotten to, you can actually use my link in the description and you can pretty much come back and use this video to get yourself up and running much quicker should you need to do that. My name is James. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and I will do my best to help and I will see you in my next video and I hope you enjoy EverWebinar as much as I do.